Hello there, Ray here, and guys, we have a huge change to the game of Minecraft. Pigling bartering is now a thing, somewhat similar to villager trading, but a little bit more crude. But with it opens the possibilities of automation in the game of Minecraft. It makes many items which were in limited supplies in the game now to be in infinite supply. Today guys, we're going to be looking at every single item that the pigling offers for a trade and seeing what are some cool uses that we can do with these items and which items are the rarest to obtain from the pigling. I'm really excited about this change and make sure you guys share this with other Minecrafters so they can be excited about it as well. Let's get into all the details with pigling bartering. Piglings are a new mob that can be found here in the crimson forest in the nether dimension. And piglings are typically hostile towards players. So if you don't have any gold armor on, they will try to attack you. But if you do have gold armor on, then they will no longer be hostile towards you. So you need at least one piece. Then you can come up and start bartering with these guys. It's not like trading with villagers where you can click into a GUI. You end up just having to kind of give them some of your items and hope that they give you something nice back. So you can go up to them and you can right click. And what they're immediately going to do is throw something back at you. So notice how I lost one of my gold ingots. And they gave me four soul sand. Now the only commodity that they will take is gold ingots. They won't take like gold blocks or gold nuggets. This is the only thing that they will work with. You can also throw it on the ground and they will pick it up. It's a very crude way of trading with these guys or bartering. We can make this up a little bit better. So you can go ahead and like take one of these guys and you can encase him. So now that he's stuck, you can come in here and easily trade with him. There is a short delay between each trade they do with him. So if I right click him, notice how he gives me the item. But he in turn is holding the ingot in his hand and he's checking it out. And only after he removes it can you right click him again and give another ingot. So you can hold on right click if you want to. And whenever he's ready, you just automatically take your next ingot. You could also just throw the entire gold stack at his feet. And as he gets time, he will pick him up and return items. He tries to throw them in the direction of where the player is. If there's no player nearby, he will throw them in the direction of where the item he picked up. It takes him about six seconds to go through each ingot. So it's kind of slow, so you can have multiple of these pigmen doing it if you want to. And by using a simple AFK pigmen XP farm here, like this one we designed during our snapshot stream and I'll be showing in a future video, you can easily obtain gold ingots while being AFK, along with a bunch of other loot. With these gold ingots, you can actually go ahead and directly drop them onto the piglings using droppers, and they in turn will give you their items. So you really don't need to have any player interaction with the piglings, which means all items that obtain from the piglings are essentially similar to just AFKing a gold farm. With a whole bunch of these guys in a small hole like this, you can easily go ahead and just start right clicking on them, or you can just like I said, drop the whole stack in, and they will kind of sort out themselves. You see all the items they just throw at you whenever their six seconds are ready. And they start throwing a bunch more items towards you. Now the amount of items that they give you as well as what type of item they give you is random, but there is some items which are extremely rare to be obtained by these guys and some are common and some they give in more quantities. All the items are usually from the nether dimension, many of which have never been able to be a renewable resource in the game, but now are. So let's take a look at what all the different types of items that these guys will provide, as well as the chance of them being obtained and how many do they give at a time. So here I laid out every single item that the piglings will trade for. Cheater Codes grabbed me the JSON file that tells what loots they have, and I went ahead and put it into an easy to understand wall here. So we got three different things. We got the item type, we got the amount, how much they give every time they do get this item, and the weight of the item, meaning how rare is it to actually get this item. So we're going to start here at this end, which are the most common ones, and we're going to move our way towards the most rare ones to get from the piglings. So the most common one is the nether brick item, and the pigling will give between one and four at a time, and it has a weight of 10, meaning that there's about a 10% chance that you'll get this now nether bricks don't seem to be that rare, but this is actually the first time that these are a renewable source in the game of Minecraft. Because the way you get these is by smelting down nether rack into these bricks, and nether rack itself is not a renewable resource. And these can be crafted into nether brick blocks as well as red nether brick. Next up is the crimson fungi, and they can give you anywhere between one and four of these at a time, and they have a weight of 10 as well. And these are the fungi that you normally find on the floors of the crimson forest in another dimension. You can also bone mill these up and they grow into the huge fungi. 
And this is what I used to make that huge fungi tree farm. Now with the piglings giving you this, this makes it also a renewable item. As before, there was only a limited number of those in the world. So you should be able to take these fungi and plant them and have an unlimited source of the huge fungi. Next up is rotten flesh. This is probably known as one of the most worthless items in a game of Minecraft. It comes in a quantity of either between 4 and 12. It also has a weight of 10. There's not much you can do with this. You can trade with villagers. You can also use it to feed your dogs. But overall, it's pretty worthless. Hopefully someday they'll make like a rotten flesh block. Next up we got is flint. And flint has quantities of between 3 and 8. It also has a weight of 10. Prior to this update, Flint was actually a non-renewable resource, so there was only a limited number of this in your world. Unless you use like sand generators, which can also be used for gravel. But even then, the gravel had to be mined up by the player or traded with villagers in order to actually get flint out of it. Or trading with piglings doesn't actually require players at all. Flint's mostly used to make like flint and steel or arrows. Flint's also used to craft a fletching table, which currently only can be used by villagers. And doesn't really have that many uses nowadays in Minecraft. Next up is the brown mushroom item. They come in quantities between 1 and 4 and they also have a weight of 10. These can be used to do quite a few different things. You can make different types of stews out of them, like mushroom stew, also suspicious stews. And you can also bone mill them, very similar to the huge fungi, to make huge mushrooms. And you can also put these into a composter, where we'll take an average of about 11 of these guys to make one bone mill. And they're also used to make fermented spider eyes. Next is a red mushroom item. This is given in amounts from 1 to 4. And it also has a weight of 10, very similar to the brown one. And can be used mostly in the same way. Next we have the soul sand, which comes in amounts from 1 to 4. And also has a weight of 10. And before this update, soul sand was a non-renewable resource. Meaning if you depleted your world of it, there is no way to get more of it. But with bartering, it's now a renewable resource, and this is quite a big one. With renewable soul sand means that you can also make wither bosses being a renewable resource, as the wither skulls are obtained from wither skeletons. And if you've seen my beacon in the box video, you know it's possible to make an infinitely automatic system to turn these raw materials into withers, and then into nether stars, and essentially into beacons, all automatically. It's also very useful for making bubble columns to transport entities upwards, as well as grow nether wart. Next item is the Warped Fungi. It comes in quantities between 1 and 2 and has a weight of 5. So it's twice as rare as these items. Now Warped Fungi are very similar to the Crimson Fungi item where they can be used to grow the huge fungi tree. These also have a new use in this snapshot which is scaring hoglings. And you can use this to make a hogling farm which we did during our snapshot stream and there will be a video about that very shortly. Next we have the leather piece. This comes in quantities of 2 to 7 and has a weight of 5. Leather is actually a pretty common item in the game of Minecraft, but it has some pretty good uses like making books as well as item frames. You can also make entire leather set of armor, including horse armor. But most mobs in the game of Minecraft give off leather. But now you can also get this just by AFKing at your gold farm. Next we have the raw pork. This comes in quantities of 2 to 5 and has a weight of 5. This is actually pretty useful because it's one of the high-end food sources in the game if you would cook this up. And if you really wanted to, you can actually take those mushrooms items, put them in composters, get bone mill, then bone mill these fungi into those fungi tree, then blow them up to get the fungi logs which could be crafted down to actually make a fuel source to cook your raw pork. All while just using the items that the piglings give you. Next we have Gravel, which comes in quantities from 4 to 12, which is quite a bit, and has a weight of 5. Gravel is most commonly used in making concrete, where you use gravel and sand. But you can also shovel it to get flint. And you can also use it to turn dirt into coarse dirt. And prior to this update, Gravel was a non-renewable resource other than using sand generators. But with this new change, it is now possible to get infinite amounts of dirt, as you can take 2 dirt and mix it with some gravel and get 4 quartz dirt which you can convert back into dirt and you can constantly repeat the process by adding more gravel which also means you get unlimited amounts of other variations like puzzle, mycelium, grass blocks, and all other sorts of dirt variants. This means stuff like on skyblock it's possible to definitely expand upon your little skyblock island and produce more dirt over time. Next is the fire charge which is pretty unique item as this thing takes three different items to craft up. So to make this, you need coal plus a blaze powder 
plus a gunpowder just to make one of these. So it's actually a quite complicated recipe. And out of all these items here, this is one of the few that actually has a recipe and you normally can't naturally find it in the game. It comes in quantities of one and has a weight of five. Fire charges can be used by the player to light fires. So they could be used to relight your nether portal in case you get stuck in the nether. They also can be shot out dispensers as a projectile. And they are used in rockets to make cool explosions. So it's really cool to just now see such a complicated item able to be obtained without having to craft it up because I really dislike crafting. That's one of the reasons why I enjoy automating so much stuff in the game of Minecraft. Next we have the Shroom Light, which is a new block in 1.16, has a amount of 1 that's dropped, and has a weight of 5. And these are a renewable resource, they come from bone milling up those fungi, huge fungi, which have a chance of spawning with these Shroom Lights on them. They're more of a decorative block, but they also do produce light. Next we have the Ender Pearl, which might seem odd to have, but there is Enderman there. And it comes in amounts from 2 to 4 and has a weight of 2 which makes it twice as rare as these guys over here. Ender pearls are pretty useful for transportation and can be used to craft up eyes of ender. So getting a few extra on the side is probably pretty nice for most players. Next we have magma cream which comes in amounts from 1 to 3 and has a weight of 2. Now you can get these automatically from killing magma and you can also craft them by taking blaze powder and slime and crafting them up. These are used to make potions as well as craft them into magma blocks. Crafting these up is definitely a fast way of getting them as getting magma cubes to spawn is quite rare. So it's nice to see an alternative way to farm these up without having to craft them. Next we have glowstone dust which has quantities between 2 and 4 and has a weight of 2. This is also used in potion making as well as fireworks and can be crafted into glowstone blocks and also spectral arrows. You get a lot of this mostly from like witches so getting it from these guys isn't that big of a deal. But not a big deal can't be said about the next one which is obsidian block. It has a amount given of 1 and also has a weight of 1 meaning it's twice as rare as the previous one. This is the first time that obsidian blocks are given as an item in the game other than than finding them rarely inside of a chest. Now obsidian itself is a renewable resource meaning that you could get this from a couple different things like nether portals, obsidian platform, or obsidian pillars by mining them up and then regenerating those structures. This is actually given to you as an item. You don't have to mine it up or use withers or wither cages to actually get this item. So that's a really big deal. But it does have a weight of only one meaning that's a little bit less than a 1% chance of you getting this every time you give a pigling a gold ingot. So we'll be slow to actually obtain them this way, but overall it's going to be a lot more AFK and easier to do. It's also a very useful resource as you can make beacons out of these, enchanting tables, as well as ender chests, and stuff like nether portals. Next up is quartz, which is another non-renewable resource prior to this update. It comes in quantities from 1 to 4 and has a weight of 1 as well. So less than 1% chance of a pigling giving you this. Quartz is a major item used for redstone as you can build comparators as well as observers which are highly used. And prior to this you had to actually mine up quartz ore in the nether dimension which we all know is a non-renewable resource. So trying to get large amounts of this was very difficult and when they talked about piglin bartering I tweeted to the developers asking them if they could add quartz ores or quartz items as one of the items that the piglins would barter for and yes, they have added it. I am so happy. This means we can now farm up quartz without having to actually manually go around in the nether and mine up ore blocks. Quartz also has other uses like making quartz blocks, which can have a wide variety of variations. You can also make daily senses with them, as well as you can make diorite and granite using this. And this means that diorite is now a renewable resource as well, as you can obtain this from these piglings. Another item used to make diorite is cobble, which you can easily make a cobblestone farm. This also means that granite is renewable resource as granite can be crafted using a diorite plus another quartz. And the last one on the list is the nilium block, but only the warped variation. This comes in quantities of 1 and has a weight of 1. Warped nilium is one of the new blocks in the warped forest biome in the nether. And other than its aesthetics look, you can also plant the fungi on top of it and grow them off of it. But oddly enough, there is no crimson variation of this given by the piglings. That might change in a future update. But this also makes it a renewable resource as before you'd have to just mine up the biomes in order to get this stuff. Or you could convert netherrack into this, but netherrack itself is not a renewable resource in Minecraft. 
So in total, there is 19 different items that the pigling can give you. And with this one change that they added to the game, it actually opened up quite a big door to what can be actually automated and of everything that is now a renewable resource. So you don't have to worry about running out of supplies, especially if you're not looking to constantly be traveling out further and farther to get new resources. Overall, I'm really happy by the quartz as well as obsidian being an item, even if it's really rare. It is an infinitely automatic item that can be obtained in the game. I would love to hear you guys' opinions about this change. And remember guys, if you haven't checked out all the other crazy farms I've designed for the Nether update, be sure to check them out. I'll link them down below. And leave a like on the video as well as remember to share this video with other Minecrafters so they can learn about these cool changes to the game. And I would like to thank you guys for watching. Bye bye.